Hi everyone, this is Andrew Hoffman and today I wanted to show you two different ways that you can organize all of the code and assets inside of your Godot game such that your Godot game is scalable and you won't run into any issues with refactoring or having to do a lot of work reorganizing in the future once the amount of code and assets, scenes and so forth in your game has become substantial. So first we're going to start with a modular pattern. This is a pattern that you'll see that is adopted in a lot of newer programming frameworks and libraries. On the web, you see this in libraries such as React.js or Vue.js, but you'll also see it becoming more and more popular in game development, in particular if you look at systems like the Unity game engine's plugin system and the Unity store's modular asset store. So these, this is a modular way of organizing your Godot project. So we start at the root and we'll create a new folder and we'll call this folder modules. And inside the modules folder, what we're gonna do is for every discrete minimum viable set of code required to make some functionality work, we're gonna create a new folder. So an example of a folder could be player. Now using a modular hierarchy, what's going on is this player folder will have to contain all of the scenes, scripts, and assets required to generate a player on the screen. So for example, we could create a player here, a scene, and call it the player scene, right? And this is inside of the player module. And we could also add in some assets. So if we were to open this up in the file manager, I could drag and drop a PNG representing the player, in this case, just a, a blue icon, as you can see right there, 32 by 32, and that is also existing within the same player module. Finally, if I wanna add any scripts, I can create a player script, and that player script exists within the player module as well. So this is one way to organize your Godot project, and it's called a modular approach to the organizational structure of your Godot game. Now there's some upsides and there's some downsides with this approach. Upside number one is if you make a lot of games and so let's say you're making smaller games and you have modules that you want to share between games, it's actually incredibly simple to move them. All you'd have to do is copy and paste this folder for the player into any other Godot game and because all of the code, all of the scenes and all of the assets required to instantiate a player inside of the game exist within the player folder, you can easily move it over, you can publish it online. If you're doing a tutorial, you can include the folder alongside the tutorial for the specific modules you want to make use of. Now the downsides come when you start making more complex Godot games or Godot games that, for example, make use of a lot of shared assets. In this case, you can see that the player PNG right here, this is representing, for example, the player body. So if we were to create a child node here, we we're able to call this a sprite. And then we were to attach this PNG to the player. Well, you know, in most cases, if you have a player that has a body and that body's not gonna be used elsewhere, that's fine, you can leave it in the module. But if your player is a human and uses components of a human body, and so do NPCs, now you have this issue where if you create an NPC folder like this and you start scaffolding it out akin to the player folder, but you need to make use of these player assets, you're actually gonna have to reference assets inside of the player folder. And now you have this cross module reference, which pretty much eliminates the benefit of using a modular organization system. In other words, if you were to delete the player module, the NPC module would no longer work if it relies on assets from the player directory. So for smaller games, or for games that don't do a lot of asset and code sharing, the modular structure can be very beneficial. However, when you get into very large scalable games, you wanna use a different structure, what I'm gonna call a hierarchical structure instead. So for a hierarchical structure, and you'll notice this on many of my videos, we're gonna create a scenes folder at the top level right here. We're gonna create a scripts folder and we're gonna create finally an assets folder. And as you can see, 
If we ignore the modules folder right there, scripts, scenes, and assets are basically the same things that each module would contain individually. Now, if we were to move the player module from this modular structure into the hierarchical structure, what we do is move the player.gd into scripts, we move the player.png into assets, and the player.tscn into scenes. And we can delete this folder now for the purpose of this demonstration. Now, as we scale a game like this, the benefit is we start with a relatively flat structure and we get deeper and deeper, so we nest deeper and deeper as time goes on and as the complexity of the game increases. And we'll actually end up creating a slightly modular hierarchy because, for example, if we have a lot of assets for the player, we will create a folder under assets called player assets, or in fact just player because assets is kind of a given. And we're going to drag and drop our objects into the player folder. Now how do you know where to drag and drop an asset in order to prevent the same issue from the modular structure from occurring? Well, it's pretty simple actually. So in this case, the only difference between the hierarchical structure and the modular structure for your Godot application is right here in this corner. We're only going to put uh, asset under the player directory if it's only used by the player object. Now, if this asset were to be used by multiple other scenes or multiple other scripts, we would instead put it at the top level under assets or create a separate folder here called shared. So that's two ways of doing it. So either the top level becomes the shared assets or we create another subdirectory of assets, same goes for scenes and scripts, called shared. And this is a structure for a Godot application that allows you to scale further beyond what you can with a purely modular structure. And sometimes it'll end up looking even a little bit like a modular structure. The main difference being is there's this root hierarchy right here where all of your shared assets, all of your shared scenes, and all of your shared scripts will go. So just for one more example, we imagine the player has a projectile that shoots fire. Well, here we have this fire PNG, right? And we could put it into player, but if the NPCs are also capable of shooting fire projectiles, now they have to reach in and do a load or a preload invoking code from the player folder, which makes them referentially dependent. So instead, we put this either in the root of the assets right here, and everything in the root of the assets that is not a folder becomes a shared asset, or we simply put it in a shared directory so that we're aware that every asset in here is shared. Furthermore, when you're using a, a structure like either the modular structure or the hierarchical structure for your Godot application, it becomes very easy to write scripts that load in anything from within your application without even really knowing where it is. An example of this would be, imagine the player wants to load in the fire PNG. Well, if we already know that fire is used by multiple other entities aside from the player, it's always going to be in the shared folder. So here we can say fire is going to be equal to load. We know it's a PNG, so it's going to be in assets. And we also know it's shared, so it's going to be in shared. And then finally, we know the name of it roughly. We can look that up. But then we don't have to do any searching. Uh, just for those of you who don't know, control shift F to search whole project. We don't have to do any searching. We don't have to do any sorting in order to find those objects. They always appear in the same hierarchical order as long as we adhere to this structure. So this is my conclusion on two ways that you could organize your Godot game. And I strongly suggest implementing one of these two methods in every Godot game that you produce. Because if you don't, you're going to end up with a lot of spaghetti code. You're going to end up with a lot of cross-referential files, folders, scenes, GD scripts, etc. And then when you have to refactor, when you have to rip out code, delete different components of your application, it's become much, much more complicated. So that's all I had for today. Thanks for watching. And if you like this type of content, consider subscribing to my channel. It's the big red button to the bottom right of this video.